Hi everyone, my name is Emily and I'm the Young Adult Librarian at the Rock Island Public Library. And today I have a book talk for you about a nonfiction book, and this is The Sawbones Book. So this book is by Dr. Sydney McElroy, and this is her husband, Justin McElroy. And they host a podcast called Sawbones. This is one of my favorite podcasts. According to the back, it's the planet's most popular medical podcast, and it's been downloaded over 45 million times. And in this book, as well as the podcast, you learn a lot about various things that were thought to be medicine in the past, which weren't. Um, humans have a long history of trying different things to cure disease because we want to help each other. We want to cure disease. But the problem is, um, we haven't always been very good at it. In fact, until the previous century, we just, we were quite bad at it in many ways with most diseases. Um, I mean, in chapters in this book, you'll learn about opium and why people thought, oh yes, I mean, this is, this is a drug that you really shouldn't use. But in the 19th century, people thought, yes, yes, this makes people feel better. So it must be curing their disease. It was not. Um, another thing about medicine in the past is uh, one thing that doctors need to study, um, something that's important in their training, is being able to dissect uh, human bodies. Because, you know, there's simulations nowadays, like there's, you know, you can do like a virtual reality type thing, but it's not the same as cutting into a body. Like that is a skill if you're going to be a surgeon or, you know, doing that kind of work, you probably need to have. You need to have that experience firsthand with a person or what was once a person. So nowadays people donate their bodies to science and there's you know, lots of legal ways for medical schools to get human cadavers. But in previous centuries, this was against the law. And so to get cadavers, uh, there was a lot of grave robbing that would happen. And grave robbing was a pretty lucrative business uh, in the past, particularly in the 19th century. Uh, there were some famous court cases where people were put on trial for stealing bodies and then selling them to medical colleges. So you can learn in this book how to rob a grave super fast and you know why grave robbing. You shouldn't do it, but historically it has you know been an important part of science. So there's that. Also, I mean, there are answers to many horrifying questions like, how likely am I to spontaneously burst into flames? Not very, don't worry about it. As with the very first one of these book talks, I talked about this. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, how long after the chicken strapped to my arm dies, will my plague be cured? So this was a thing during the bubonic plague. Um, the bubonic plague probably wiped out about a third of Europe. And at its peak, I mean, it was just so deadly. And nobody knew how to cure this. Nobody knew how it spread, really. But, I mean, they had all these wrong ideas for how it could maybe be cured. Like, one remedy was, okay, if you strap a chicken to your arm and leave it there until it dies, it'll, like, suck the plague out of you. Which is not how chickens or plague work. So it didn't work, but people sure did try it a lot. Uh, has anyone ever died from dancing too much? Yes. The answer to that question is yes. Um, in 1518, there was a very famous outbreak of the dancing plague, which is a thing that's happened a few times in human history. I'm reading another book about this now. But 1518 is kind of the most famous one. It's the most, you know, I think well-documented and modern dancing plague. Um, you know, over 500 years ago now. But basically, one day, this woman named Frau Trophy, she left her house and she started dancing. And at first people thought she was just like trying to spite her husband who didn't like dancing. But then she kept dancing until her shoes filled with blood. And she'd like pass out and then she'd get up and start dancing again. So, I mean, we don't know what happened to her. Like she was sort of the patient zero for this. Like it started with her. It's documented as she was the first person. And she was taken to this nearby shrine. Um, this, this was the Shrine of St. Vitus, that supposedly cured people with maladies like this. But after this, um, after Frau Trophe was taken to the shrine, other people started dancing. Hundreds of people in the town of Strasbourg started dancing. 
and they kept dancing. And at its peak, the dancing plague killed like 15 people a day. People would dance until they died. How do you dance yourself to death? Well, you're dying of lots of things. Um, you know, maybe you're not eating or drinking while dancing. Uh, you might have a heart attack. If you're dancing until your shoes fill with blood, you're gonna get an infection and maybe die because, you know, it's 1518. We don't have antibiotics yet. So it's a fascinating story and you get to learn about it in this book. Um, another question, why did we ever think bloodletting was a good idea? Um, I mean, this unfortunately goes back a long time. Um, for a lot of human history, people thought, oh, well, this will certainly make you feel different, so maybe it's curing you. So basically, in the past, people believed that if you had too much blood, it could make you sick. So maybe if you were sick, that meant, okay, we just need to get rid of some of your blood and you'll get better. And of course, that's not how blood works or just really any kind of sickness. Although bloodletting has some medical applications, but it's not a cure-all. It, it doesn't cure everything the way some people in the past certainly thought. Uh, also in this book, you'll learn about Phineas Gage, who is a fascinating figure in medical history. Uh, he survived. What happened to him? Uh, one day he was working, packing explosives for a railroad. This was a job you had to do to make room for railroad tracks and it involved stuffing explosives under big rocks. And to do this, he had this big iron rod. And the problem with this job was sometimes the explosives would go off early and kill people. But in Phineas Gage's case, uh, he was packing explosives. They did go off early. What happened is the iron rod went through his skull and everybody thought, okay, he's dead. But then he sat up and was like talking to people. He was bleeding. It, you know, you see like the trajectory of the rod and you can see from this photo, you know, it did cause permanent damage to him. Like he was badly injured, but he didn't die. And so the book gets into a little bit about how different parts of the brain do different things and how, I mean, as incredible as it seems, people in the past, um, you know, in some cases, they would die from things that today we consider relatively minor. But people could also survive really catastrophic, horribly traumatic injuries. And, you know, this book explains that medicine, sometimes it did more harm than good. Um, but in other cases, you know, especially by the 19th century, people were starting to understand how to treat people who, you know, maybe had a certain disease or were injured in a certain way. They started to have strategies that worked. Another thing you will encounter in this book is the concept of the four humors. Now, humorism was this thing where they believed these four things sort of controlled the human body. So there was black bile, yellow bile, phlegm, and blood. And that's where you get the bloodletting thing. Uh, this idea that, oh, well, if you're hot and, you know, maybe feverish or otherwise have something wrong with you, you know, too much blood can cause all kinds of problems. So let's get rid of some of that. Uh, also, you will discover why people in some cultures, you know, in many different parts of the world, used to believe that one thing that might cure some types of illness is drilling a hole in someone's head. And, I mean, unfortunately, this really didn't go away until the 20th century. Um, you know, this book doesn't give much about the horrifying history of lobotomies, which is good, uh, but it does get into the fact that trepanation, which was the drilling of a hole into someone's head for medical purposes or other reasons, did exist for a long time. And that's why every episode of this podcast ends with the phrase, don't drill a hole in your head. So if you like history and you want to learn about, you know, some of the grosser aspects of medical history, check this out. Uh, it's available through Hoopla. So if you go to that app, you can read the ebook right now, this very moment. Thanks for watching, and I will see you again soon.